Welcome to another Talking Heads. I'm Chris Bowers. I'm alongside Craig Gabriel and we're at Wimbledon. And Craig, one of the main talking points of the week has been the amount of players who clearly weren't fit when they turned up for their first round matches. They retired mid-match, in one case after just five games. But before we knock players, we also have to have a certain amount of understanding for the pressures on players ranked maybe around 80 to 150 and how important it is for their annual income to be able to pick up the kind of first round losers prize money, which at Wimbledon is £35,000. Well, that's what I earn in a day, so it doesn't bother me. I wish. Look, I understand that situation, but then we've also got to look at the side of the, of the organisers and in matches that uh, end abruptly and quick rescheduling, and then also the fans who've played a, paid a lot of money to occupy some of these seats, and, and I guess some of them might feel that they're being robbed, but there's an argument on both sides of this, and, and it's a very difficult situation. I mean, maybe one of the things is that if you're carrying an injury and you go into a match that in, and if you have to pull out, then maybe you're, you're going to get half the prize money. But how do you prove that? I mean, yeah. you know, every player, as we know, is carrying some sort of little niggle. Um, where does that little niggle become an injury that they have to then declare beforehand? Is it a case of a, a bit of a more responsibility on the respective tours for, regarding their players when they walk on? It, it is a very complex, difficult question to answer. And, and to, to come up with something that's going to satisfy everybody, um, you know, if you know the player is going out there, that's the point that I'm making, with an injury... They're taped up, they're bandaged up, whatever, and they have to pull out because of that injury. Then is there a question that, or a point that they only get half the prize money and the balance goes into a pool that maybe goes towards charity? It's an interesting idea. I mean, I think the most important thing is we want competitive matches sure. in the first round. So uh, that solution wouldn't actually prevent players coming to pick up even 50% of the first round losers' prize mm -hmm. money. The ATP operated system whereby if you're injured uh, but you turn up for the tournament and then you can't play, you do get your first round losers prize money anyway. But of course we're talking about a lot lower sums right. and we're talking about a lot fewer players per tournament. Then there's also the point of if they have to pull out during a match, they have to provide their time and give back to the sport, give back to the game, give back to the tournament and they have to be available for a lot of activities, maybe a lot more than they necessarily would have been up for. But you know, there's also the other point on this, Chris, in that a player goes on injured, they don't know what could happen on the other side of the net. They could play a drop shot, suddenly the opponent is coming in, and, whoops, slips and twists an ankle or something like that, they have to retire. Then the original player who may be carrying an injury has a little bit more time up their sleeves. As Roger Federer was saying, we are in England. We're suspect to the weather over here quite a bit. We could suddenly have a black cr cloud above the court breaking with torrential rain, giving a player a little bit more opportunity. But that's, that's what every coach tries to tell their player. Yeah. Don't give up unless you absolutely have to, because your opponent may be about to give up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's, there was a situation with Nick Kyrgios. Nick came on. We know he has been struggling big time with this hip injury, but he really felt he had to give it a shot. This is his favorite tournament. You know, think about the players as well in those situations. And after two sets, he did have to retire from his first round match. But even his coach was telling him to quit because he was in a state, but he still felt he wanted to give it a shot. See, the tragedy for me about all this is that in recent years, the leading players, the likes of Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, have been very, very keen to make sure that any increases in prize money have been spread across the various rounds. And if anything, the lower rounds have had more prize money so that the lower ranked players can pick up more. Now, that's yeah. been a great egalitarian gesture mm -hmm. by the top players uh, for the benefit of the sport but it's actually coming back to bite them, or the yeah. gesture is coming back to bite the sport because the, the first round rewards are so great that players are taking them even if they're not fit to. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's a very, that's a very valid point. And I think the other side of this is we so rarely see the biggest names in the sport having to retire from a match. And then when 
a lesser name or somebody maybe ranked around 80, 100, 120 has to retire, it becomes a little bit more of a finger-pointing situation. Well, those big guns haven't really retired that often in early rounds and, you know, even if they've walked on with injury. So you should be out there playing even harder or, or, or not using an injury timeout or something like that. Is there anything we can do for the financial situation of those players who aren't earning the big bucks. I mean, if you plot the income on a graph with the players ranked, I mean, that almost all the money, the big money, is for the top 20, mm -hmm. and the, the curve drops off very rapidly after that. For the players ranked between, say, 80 and 150, who are not earning bad money, but who are hardly uh, living it up in luxury, um, is there anything that, that can be done for them so that they don't face that incentive of having to turn up at a tournament when they're not fit just because they can't afford not to take the first round prize money? You know, good luck to them and God bless the, 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 the biggest names because they're the ones really selling the tickets so they d and they've put, you know, they've got their results and all that so they deserve the, all the prize money that they get. As far as the lower ranked players, what do you do? I mean, it's a very difficult question. This is their chosen profession. They're putting the work in, they're training. If they're not training hard enough, then that's a different matter altogether. I don't know what you would say. I mean, is it a case of they need to put more time in with giving back to the sport and earning funds their money that way as well in addition to putting their bodies on the line with specific matches it is a very difficult and very complex question and point finally craig do you not think this really emphasizes the fact that while tennis seems a very glamorous sport when you look at the top 30 top 50 it's actually an incredible grind once you're outside the elite group. Oh, there's no doubt about it. It is a grind. I mean, not everybody's on private jets and in six-star hotels or anything like that or, or, or driving Maybachs around the place, etc. You know, it is a very, very difficult sport and a very difficult career. There's no doubt about it. And, and uh, it, it's a tough thing for the players because they're, they're, you know, scraping through some of them and working hard. But, you know, They've chosen it. You don't know when you are going to get that break. And then suddenly you're on the private jets and driving the Maybachs and staying at the five and six, six star hotels. Well, let's hope they can find a solution to it because it's very sad when you see people pay good money for centre court tickets and then find that yeah. two successive matches end in less than 45 minutes. Do they reschedule? You know, do, is it a case of if that sort of thing happens that a lucky loser comes in or is it a case of um, to, to give the, the patrons something back for their money that the two players, if it is a case of back-to-back, -back, do play an exhibition to satisfy the public, just as Novak Djokovic was jokingly suggesting. So, uh, yeah, it is a complex uh, um, point to, to discuss. You've been listening to Talking Heads on Headline with Craig Gabriel and me, Chris Bowers.